excited. We, we actually uh, practiced real football the last couple of days. Uh, it's, it's been good. Go ahead, ask the question. Who wants to ask? Let me just start with the soccer question. Sure. The, uh, the early signing period before practice, yes. did that really kind of change things because you guys are on the road for two weeks and you don't practice you know, the full allotment until you start signing deadlines or whatever? You know what? Um, there's, I don't know, there's, there's a new rule out there that, that a lot of people don't know. So there's not a 15 pr practice limit anymore. You can practice as many times as you want. You can even, if, if our goal will be on the 31st, we can practice all the way up to the 13th if we wanted to. I mean, you, you can practice, everybody has the same advantage. You can practice all the way to the national championship game. Um, you kind of got to evaluate your team at the end of the season and see who you have and what's more, what's more important. Is it getting them prepared to win a football game by giving them a chance to get healthy? Or is it beat them into the ground, which I wouldn't mind, and practice more? But we've got some guys that are nicked up. So being able to be out on the road and being able to watch film, the, the, the amazing thing is the ability to have all the games on our computer as fast as we do. I mean, our, our video department here, Alex and Dan, they do an unbelievable job. And so all those things are with us immediately. So as we're doing the recruiting and going and sitting in your hotel room at night, you can do all kinds of game planning. And that, I mean, that, that stuff is fun. So uh, we decided to give our guys a week off and let them focus on school and academics because it was right during finals time. And then this last week, we just lifted them to get them back into that shape. And then yesterday was the first practice that we've had since the, the last game. Um, I thought the structure of that was really, really good. Um, and the energy that they had and the effort that they gave yesterday was awesome. And so looking at it now, I think it was Really, really good decision. I mean, you always, when you miss out on practice opportunities, you always wonder if it's the right thing. I, I don't have any question that it was the right thing to do with how they practiced the last two days to give us a chance to win. Uh, I think the early signing period is great, though, because you know who you're going to get. If they don't sign, something's up. And so it's a lot easier to fill holes with somebody because you know who's out there and who's not. You don't have to play. You don't have to try and steal anybody because they're already done. Uh, the, the next tricky part is all the kids that want to do stuff for the All-Star game. Uh, they're they're going to sign. They don't want to sign. They, the, the the NCAA making it a two day signing period really made it hard on those kids because if it's like the other one in in the spring where you can sign further, uh, you would have some different decisions. It would make it harder. So I like the way the setup of it. Um, I think Tuesday uh, night is always Tuesday night and the first Tuesday of February has always been a nightmare. Okay. Well now it's tonight. Uh, this is as hard a deal. You got to. I mean, you're you're making phone calls. And I think FaceTime is a great thing because you can see where they're at. Turn around, show me where you're at. Who, I mean, what are you doing? So I, and it's good. I mean, if you have that relationship with them, which we do with 90% of our kids, um, they don't mind, and it's good. Uh, I mean, when I was first, it, you used to be able to, on signing day, there would be two, three coaches parked at the house waiting until they made it a dead period. So, I mean, it's, it's changed significantly. But this night, this night is not, uh, it's not easy. It's uh, there will be a lot of tension tonight, and when those things start rolling in at 6 a.m. tomorrow, um, it has to be seven local time, their time, wherever they're sending them from. So the ones that are coming from Tampa will be here at five, and 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 those things. So back east, so it'll be fun. I I, I enjoy, and then the cheering them on and talking to them after they sign because this is a big deal for these kids. I mean, they are the transfer portals changed it a little bit but they're really making a decision that is life eventful. I mean, it's, uh, and for those guys to have the opportunity, um, there's, a, there's a great stat in recruiting. 93% of Americans go to college and when they leave, they owe somebody money. They have debt of some kind, whether it be student loans, their parents, credit cards, whatever. A division one football player, a division one full ride scholarship athlete has a chance to be one of the 7% of Americans that don't have any debt, know anybody money when they graduate. And that is a huge advantage. And if you structure academics and you graduate kids early like we do, where we have 15 kids currently playing with eligibility, second in the nation, they have tremendous advantages. And the Champions for Life program that we have here that teaches those kids budgeting, the, the kid, tonight's a big, tomorrow morning's a big deal for a lot of people. I mean, it, it changes their life forever. And it changes our lives forever too, because we find good players, we win. So. It's fine. Some of the latest reports say that you're one of two final candidates uh -huh. for that next job. Um, I guess what does it mean to you in the running? And then how did that yesterday that you won for you? You know, the, the, um, like I said a couple weeks ago, 
you listen to everything. Um, there have been some conversations now that I've had. I think uh, they might have owed it to me just because of my history there, and that's great. Um, it's always nice to be wanted. The best thing about the whole deal is, is the way Coach Edwards and, and uh, Gene and Ray and Dr. Crow, um, they have been just super supportive. And that's not everywhere. There's a lot of a lot of people that you work for that would not, I mean, don't like it. And this one has, has carried on for a long time with all that stuff out there and, and rumors and stuff. And so um, I'm honored that, that my name's out there and the consideration and all that stuff. Um, uh, there's There's been conversations. Uh, I know a lot of things back there, so I would probably have an advantage as far as I wouldn't need to be on that campus to know what they have. Um, I mean, of all the of all the interest that I had this off season, it's very um, very appreciated. You know, I I don't ever want to take anything for granted. Um, I I have I would have zero desire to be a, a coordinator, a defense coordinator at another Power Five school, this place. Um, and the, there's a lot of the ones that gave interest that I would have zero desire to be the head coach. Um, do I want to be head coach? Someday. Uh, I think that opportunity presents itself if you do things right. And the side of that, the side of being a head coach that I would hate is my position room. I absolutely love spending time with those guys every day. That's, that's one of the major th reasons that I do this job. And the relationships of that and the recruiting side of it. Um, so. I mean, that's all that speculation. It, it is what it is. And I mean, it's, I don't have anything for you other than that. Have you been told about a timetable on that? Um, no. So, you know, here's, I'll say this. The ability to win is what drives me in this business. I've said it a hundred times. I hate losing more than I enjoy winning. And that's really sad because winning is really fun and it's really hard to do in this game. But I really do. I, I just, I can't stand losing. And if you don't have the ability to win, this job ain't worth it. And so in order for me to take a job, you have to have the ability to win. And I've said that. And so that's, that's really, I mean, I, I don't know a timetable. I'm not, they're, they're the ones making decisions. I mean, it could have been three weeks ago. It could have been, I have no idea. I, I really don't. They haven't, they haven't told me. Um, you know, I've, I've stood my ground on what, it requires and so but I have no idea I couldn't tell you well the question then would be how how you perceive your next play as far as you want to do um if they support the program that you can compete for conference championships in the Mountain West I mean they're gonna have to do some things they're, they're struggling I mean New Mexico is a poor state um, there, right now, there's some gas and oil money that doesn't go to the school, but the, the surplus of money within the budget is good. Um, those people will do everything they can to try and give you a chance to win, but you have to be able to pay assistant coaches. You have to be able to, it, and really, it's, it's the off the field resources. It's not the head coach's salary. It's everything else that's involved in order for you to be win. I could take a job where they're going to pay me $1.5 million, and you don't have money for assistance, and you don't have money for academic support, athletic, the, all, all the frills, recruiting, on campus, off campus. If you don't have that, it makes it almost impossible to win. And so those are the things that at New Mexico would, would need to be stepped up. Um, and that's not just a New Mexico problem. That's, we, got, we got some of those issues here. So uh, that, would be, that, that would be the perception of the ability to win. How, how engaged are they in, in that opportunity? Uh huh. Uh, that something that uh, you obviously strive for. What did you make of that, and what do you think about how that uh, affects the team? Um, I, I don't think it affects the team moving forward. Those guys, I think it puts a little bit more chip on our shoulder, and I, I don't let them forget because, I mean, obviously we haven't earned the respect uh, for a lot of the things that, that we should. Um, I think uh, Kobe Williams is no doubt one of the best DBs in this league, the way he played this year. Uh, I mean, we led the Pac-12 in, in takeaways. We led the Pac-12 in takeaways per game. We led the nation in caused fumbles. That's because those guys, we have good players doing those things. We didn't get the interception number that I promised y'all, and I apologize for that. <laughs> Won't do that again. That was too much on my guys, and that's on me. Learn, learn from your mistakes. 
Uh, we're in the top half of our league in every statistical defensive category. Not to have one guy on the first or second team, it's a good chip to have on your shoulder coming into the next year. I'll tell you that. And I, I don't let our guys forget about it. Now, that rah-rah stuff works for a minute, but when you're actually playing the game, it doesn't really matter. But it can give a, it can give a player the drive to work a little harder in the offseason. And I think uh, between Chase and Jack, um, those guys the last two days have been really, really good at practice as far as their, their mindset. Kobe's Kobe. He, he hasn't changed. Yeah, that, and I'll, I'll give Kobe credit. That stuff doesn't bother him. Uh, or at least if it does, he's not letting everybody know. And that's not always easy. Um, but I, I, I'm so proud of him. He was our defensive MVP at the banquet. And he was our best player on defense this year for everything he did for the team. And Kobe Williams will have a shot in the NFL. And because of having to play safety this year, which did not service us the best as a defensive unit, but he was our best player in the era times too, it gave him some tape that those guys are really going to be envious of because he fits the, the nickel spot in the NFL scheme. And so I'm super proud of him, and I can't wait. Uh, I mean, we got an opportunity to have a, a receiver draft in the first round for the second year in a row from this school. It's awesome. We got a freshman All-American quarterback. I mean, Brandon's an AP All-American. We are we are trending in the right way, and there's a lot of really neat things. And the defensive side of the ball, we got a lot of great players, and I'll keep reminding them that nobody thinks they are. So it's good. Yeah, you know. Very. Um, I think uh, Cam Akers, uh, I wanted to send him a text, tell him thank you. I mean, he saw with Eno not going to play, so hey, they're the best guys that going to play. We'll make it even. It was very kind of him. I appreciate that. Um, Tamron Terry, number 15, he's, he's as good a receiver as we've seen. I mean, he, he has, does things like Michael Pittman, uh, Chanel. I mean, all those guys that really caused trouble for everybody in our league, he has that ability. He's their over-the-top threat that, that – it's dangerous, okay? Kalen LeBourne, the running back number four that's gonna come in uh, for Cam Akers. Two years ago, he was the number one running back recruit in the country, five star, I mean, so he's got all kinds of ability. Um, and he's got the same similar build. He's over 200 pounds, he runs hard. Um, both Blackman and, and so since Horny Brooks gone, uh, 12, um, both the other two quarterbacks, uh, they are very athletic and very talented. Uh, the freshman who has another game left, he can he can take uh, very similar to Khalil Tate as far as when he touches it, he can take it uh, 80 yards for a touchdown. So luckily we got to practice a couple of the game plans for our last game uh, of the season. We've got to be able to identify who the quarterback is now that Joey is, is doing what he's doing. Uh, since he's not out there practicing, we're having to use different bodies, so we lost a little bit of an advantage there. Um, now, here, here's a perfect uh, Joey Yellen. Love the young man. And nobody should be upset with what he wants to do for why. The portal has changed things in this time of football. The young man has been an unbelievable teammate. And he got an opportunity to play in an elite game against an elite school. And the young man threw four, almost five touchdowns. He got a taste of it. And all the hard work he's put in, now he just wants to see if he has an opportunity. You can't blame him for that. And if it doesn't work out, we're going to love to have him back here. And so uh, those are the kind of kids we want in our program that are going to fight and be just desirable to get out there on the field. Now, you don't know. I mean, he didn't know he's going to get a chance to play. Jaden got hurt. Next guy up is, I mean, football, in the game of football, every play could be the last play for somebody. And we oftentimes as, as players, and I'm not a player anymore, but take that for granted. Uh, Joey's just going to try and get him an opportunity somewhere. And he'll get one, and he'll do very well. Um, getting back to the Florida State offense, uh, McKitty, number six, are tied in. They're, they're very similar schematic-wise to the last two teams we played, Oregon and Arizona. Um, God, it hates me to even say that. But uh, the anti-200, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, they're very physical up front. They're big. Uh, number 70, their right guard, he's, he's probably the biggest human being we played this year. Um, they, I mean, shoot, they're going for over 400 yards a game. They're running it for 130. They're throwing it for 270. They're scoring 30 points a game, 29.8. The when you watch them on tape, you get the impression that they throw it everywhere. And then statistically, you look at it and it's pretty balanced. So they provide a great challenge. 
the day that they announced the bowl matchups, shoot, you hear Florida State, I've always wanted to play Florida State, this would be exciting. And so our kids, the last two days have been awesome. They know what challenge ahead. They know how talented. It's very similar to a USC, USC team. They have talent everywhere. And well, guess what? We have talent everywhere too that we're excited to go play. It's going to be a heck of a week and, and I'm looking forward to going to the Sun Bowl and doing all those things down in El Paso and, and winning a football game. They have. They've moved. Uh, shoot. They've had. They've had 11 different starters in the offensive line, which is a really, really high number. Um, they've played guys at different positions to try and get their best combination. Uh, the last couple weeks have been fairly similar. We've, we'll see I, what I anticipate seeing in the in our bowl matchup. Um, I mean, they got two guys out. We got two guys out. They got a good receiver out and running back. We got a good receiver and running back out. So, um, very kind of them guys to get collaborate and decide to do it together. <laughs> I guess, but. Uh, it'll be fun. It'll be good. Do you think that no matter how the New Mexico team goes, do you expect that you would coach against Florida State, or is that contingent on the timing of everything? Uh, I mean, I hadn't even crossed my mind. I, I mean, I plan on coaching in the Sun Bowl and and winning that game. I hadn't even thought of that. I couldn't even tell you. Couldn't imagine that. It's, it's really, really good, and um, I can tell you, Amir Johnson ain't playing. He's played his four, so we won't burn his shirt on uh, in this game. Stephon Wright, who's played three, he'll definitely play. Um, the practice time for those guys and the excitement and the ability to have a chance to play in the game, they're practicing with a little bit different intensity when you, have, when you know you have an opportunity. And I tell them, you know you have an opportunity to get embarrassed because you go out there on CBS, on national TV, on the – I mean, the Sun Bowl's the, the second longest running sum, a bowl game in the whole entire country. People watch. You'll get embarrassed if you don't prepare right. So they practice with a little bit more intensity. Um, guys like uh, Kiwan, Keon Markham, who's played on special teams but might have a chance to play on defense. Jordan Clark, who's finally healthy. Um, we're going to try and, and find available spots for those guys to play if uh, we get situations where we can. First and foremost, the deal is to win the game. But we've told those guys that they're going to have an opportunity to play. So. It's been nice the last couple of days. They're preparing a little better. You can see they're nervous. Uh, it's a big deal. I mean, it's when the bullets are flying, it's a whole different story. So they better get themselves ramped up if they want to have that opportunity. And if they get it so that they don't get embarrassed, they perform. So, and the only, I mean, I say it all the time, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is when you win the game. You don't win it on Saturday by changing it. You prepare yourself to give yourself a chance on Saturday. You know, I did when we interviewed, and, and uh, I, am, I am really excited to have uh, Zach Hill here for numerous reasons. Going against uh, Boise State, my former school, they're significant. They're really, really hard to prepare for because of everything they do. And to be able to sit in the room and listen to him on his interview, because you watch this stuff as a, as a defensive coach and as an opponent, and you see all the things they do, and you wonder how in the heck do they teach that stuff? Because it's a lot of shifts, a lot of movement. How are they telling these? I mean, what are the trick words? And now he's not, he's not giving me their secret sauce because we can go keep competing against each other in spring ball. But he said it's not hard to teach them to do all that stuff. And as a defensive guy, you've got to spend so much time preparing for that stuff that it, because if you don't, you give up one play, it's a touchdown, and the game, it completely changes the game. You spend so much time during practice in a, in a three-day week trying to do that stuff that the meat of what they do doesn't get as much attention. And so they methodically just move the ball, move the ball, move the ball. Before you know it, they have 38 points. And so I'm excited he's on our team. Um, it's going to be good to have him around for the next two weeks because they did prepare against him. Now he can help, uh, he can help Coach Christensen and Iguano and those guys a little bit more than he can help me because the, he, you don't spend a lot of time watching that side of the ball. Um, so he'll be good to have around. Um, and what really will be good for him is he's going to be able to evaluate because he's not going to be involved in coaching the game. He'll be able to evaluate our guys. And so as we get into to the spring and, and all that stuff, he'll have a head, a leg up on if you're just watching tape because you can see a whole lot more being out there in practice and seeing those guys move around. So it's really good for him right here, and he'll have a jump start on spring ball. So it's really good for our program. Uh, 
Um, I think some have prog progressed better than others. Um, I think there are some of our older guys that probably didn't play as to, to, to the level that we thought they would. And there's some that have played better than we thought they would. Um, I think that's the in the development of, of this program, being two years in with all the kids that we had to play. Um, I would say we're pretty close to on par. Um, I mean, I thought Cam Phillips, when he was out there and Kobe was outside and those guys were rotating like that, we were really, really good on defense. When he dislocated his elbow, I thought he might be out for four weeks. That was my impression. And he only missed one game. So um, that means that young man has grown up. He's learning. He's gotten tougher. He's, he's learning how to deal with playing at this level. Um, we got a bunch of different stories like that. And there's a, the great thing about football and what I enjoy really is if you want to be really good, you have to evolve. You have to stay ahead of the game. And so now that we get through the bowl game, this whole next nine months before we get to August is what are we going to do different to be better? And if you watch our first season and you watch our second season, I let anybody, have anybody go out there and watch the tape. It's not the same. It's not. It, it, and that's by design. And year three will not be the same. And now that they're starting to understand the block reactions, now that they're starting to understand different packages, we can do a lot more. And when you can do a lot more without confusing them, because if they're confused, you got no shot. And against Oregon, we were able to do a lot more because they kind of understand some of the concepts, even though it might not be in their position. So when we had our four linebacker group in there, they kind of understood where the puzzle pieces fit because I'm not, a, I'm not one that believes that you can do a whole new scheme with new players, you're going to screw them up. And once you do that, you got no shot. So now that we've evolved, year three could be really fun. Uh, I think Jermaine Lole is another one that got screwed in the, got, sorry, bad word, that got taken advantage of or whatever you want to call it. He should have been, he should have been one of the top, he's one of the top D linemen in our, in our league. Led the Pac-12 as D linemen in tackles, third in the country. They can't move him. I mean, every coach I think will put on the tape, they don't knock him off the ball. They have a hard time blocking him one-on-one. -on -one. Um, because of some of our four-man rush stuff, they were able to double-team him a lot. They couldn't as often when, when uh, some of our better rushers, I thought Kalen uh, Thomas became one of our better four-man rushers. I mean, unbelievable the transformation he's made and the improvement he's made from year one to year two. Uh, but Jermaine got better every single week. And perfect example of Jermaine, as a true freshman, he doesn't play in the first two games because he shows up late to a meeting. Well, he learned from that. And got the idea. Now we had some guys late this year, um, handled it. We didn't have that issue the last two weeks. And guess what? We played better. Imagine that. So I'm really proud of, of Jermaine for the progress he's made, but I think he's, he gets better every week. And I think he's one of the best D linemen in this league. Should have been first team. I don't anticipate not having anybody on defense. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's. Uh, he's really excited to play. I think all of our kids are really excited to play. To be honest, so it'll be. You're right. It'll be his first. Uh, I hadn't even thought about that. It'll be his first week in the bowl experience and all the activities. And and um, if you design it right, you can still keep him focused, and they can have a really good time because it is a great reward. The Sun Bowl is a great experience. Uh, I mean, I know it's funny. We get spoiled, and, and people don't want to go places and stuff like that. Shoot, not me. Don't. If you have any idea how hard it is to to win football games and get to a bowl game, prepare right and give yourself the best shot. I mean, I'm, I'm super excited to be going there, and, and I'm sure he is. I, I didn't think about that. I'm going to have to ask him tomorrow. I, told, I tell you what, I told him this. I said, man, you got choice. You can go 10 up or 10 down. 10 up, you're going to be putting your hand in the dirt. 10 down, you're going to be a great player. And he just kind of laughed. But those are the conversations we're having. I, I'll ask him.